The purpose of um, uh, presenting this is uh, also to uh, somehow refer to what you were doing. Many of uh, the people in your groups were directly referring to the Human Development Index, trying to some improve it or something like that. So I think if we go a little bit in the, um, uh, how index is being constructed, what are its strengths and weaknesses, I think it would be um, a good uh, way for understanding uh, the difficulties we have and how we can approach them. This is very briefly the outline. Uh, just uh, we'll briefly talk about uh, the development, construction, benefits, and shortcomings. I would say with the uh, focus on shortcomings because we all know uh, the benefits and uh, HDI disaggregation. So the first very basic idea uh, we keep repeating, and I think it's worth remembering: uh, HDI is not human development. So human development is much broader than the HDI, and the human development index is an attempt to go one step beyond the GDP. Here is the list of major human development areas. So we have uh, poverty, education, health, those three which are in red are the areas captured by the Human Development Index. But above and uh, beyond this, we have also housing, we have political participation, human rights, security, environmental status, and so on. Inequality was mentioned on several occasions. It's also part of the human development paradigm and human development concept, but it is not part of the human development index. Uh, a few years ago, um, Sakigo Fukuda Par published an article. It is in the, uh, this collection which you will receive, uh, rescuing uh, human development from HDI. And it was very, very uh, simple, but very important article because, in fact, this success of human development index, which we were witnessing in during the first uh, half, or maybe the entire 90s, uh, somehow brought uh, um, up to the situation when people started perceiving the concept itself as related to just those three components of the index, which I think is unfortunate. So what is uh, HDI? It is first composite index. As any index, it ranges from uh, zero to one. And of course, uh, mm, uh, being a composite index, uh, there is the problem of the minimum and maximum levels of its individual uh, components. Second, uh, which is also unfortunate, it uh, mixes input and output indicators. This is something which is uh, sometimes being neglected, but it is important to bear in mind. Because if you think about the three components, GDP, it is uh, from human development perspective, it is input, it's not outcome. Uh, health uh, status reflected in uh, life expectancy, it is typical outcome indicator. Education uh, is composed out of two subcomponents. Literacy is obviously outcome. Enrollment rate, it's rather input indicator because we don't need enrollment rate per se, we need enrollment rate for the purposes of achieving knowledge. And I think this is, this is a major problem which somehow the index uh, has uh, in its construction. Uh, as I mentioned, it's not covering all the human development areas, but on the other hand, it is uh, a useful tool because it is equally applicable both to developing and developed countries. Of course, I will talk about the methodology, uh, how different levels of development are adjusted, but the very concept that three met issues in life, being able to have the material capability to cover basic needs in terms of uh, uh, survival, food, shelter, and so on, which is reflected in the economics. But also, apart from economics, it's important to be healthy and uh, knowledgeable. Those uh, three elements are relevant to all the countries. And also, mm, it's important uh, to see uh, the composition. Uh, it is also uh, mm, uh, somehow neglected, but that's why we're repeating it. The same value of the index can be achieved in various ways. So you can have huge value of the economic component and uh, very bad performance in the health or education and then the other way around. And that's why uh, in every human development report which we are publishing globally, we have this comparison, same value, different ways of achieving. And you really have uh, interesting, interesting uh, pictures. For example, countries which are totally desperate in terms of economic uh, performance can be very good in human development because they offset the deficit uh, in some different uh, ways. Of course, this is not a novelty that uh, human development index has its limitations. And uh, throughout uh, the 90s, the, the beginning of uh, the 2000, uh, one, two, three, 
there was a process of attempts to uh, change, to uh, introduce new elements and some, somehow to improve, to adjust. And this is a brief list of uh, major uh, contextually similar indices which were being introduced. So out of this, uh, uh, few stick. Uh, this is the gender empowerment measure. This is the uh, gender development index, index which penalizes for uh, gender inequalities. And human, human poverty index is one and two. Uh, one for developing countries, uh, two for developed countries. There were other attempts for greening the HDI, technological achievements, uh, so political freedom to be somehow integrated, but in fact, we should be frank, they don't uh, stick. And uh, their robustness, relevance, and utility is uh, questionable. By the way, in the uh, bracket, uh, it is very interesting. Statisticians, professional statisticians, are very skeptical um, about the Human Development Index, and this is also one of the reasons why it is important to understand its weaknesses, but also strengths. They are skeptical about uh, composite indices uh, per se, but uh, this is just uh, something which is important to know. So these, <clears throat> these are the components. Uh, Human Development Index uh, has three components, as we know. Education, two-thirds of the weight of the educational index uh, is uh, from literacy, one-third from enrollment rate. Health reflected in life expectancy, very important to bear in mind. Don't confuse life expectancy with average lifespan. And standard of living ref reflected in uh, GDP per capita, in PPP dollars, purchasing power parity dollars. Why in PPP? Because uh, uh, the purpose of uh, HDI is uh, to compare achievement of countries. And uh, we cannot, cannot uh, use uh, some current exchange rate or some uh, other conversion because of the different structures, both of prices but also of ownership. And for example, uh, the, the, the way uh, people meet their material needs in different countries is different. In some countries, for example, people are renting their flats and have uh, different structure of the price of a real market. In other, like in the post-Soviet space, this is common to own their dwelling. So different uh, uh, levels of uh, prices of different commodities is uh, visible. So it is a little bit uh, difficult to put it on the common denominator. And the PPP, uh, in fact, is recalculation of the national currency uh, values to the level as if the st structure of the prices and the economic conditions in country X, Y, or Z is similar to that in New York. Uh, this is how HDI is constructed. Uh, we have you know, to index uh, minimum and maximum values. For the life expectancy at birth, the minimum is 25 and the maximum is 85. It is, uh, assume, it is in fact, assuming that uh, if uh, the life expectancy in certain countries below uh, 25, so that we can't talk at all about uh, uh, healthy life. If it is beyond 85, it is assumed that it doesn't contribute to human development uh, anymore. Yes, people can live on 100 years, but uh, in fact, their quality of life is uh, more or less similar the, to that of uh, the age of 85. The adult literacy rate, similar philosophy, uh, minimum is zero, maximum is uh, 100. Gross enrollment rate as well. Uh, and the GDP per capita, the minimum is $100 uh, uh, PPP, with the assumption that below 100 you're simply dead and there is no development. And uh, the maximum is $40,000 uh, per capita, with the assumption that any increase in this uh, uh, value does not bring you additional benefits from human development perspective. Uh, it means, for example, if you have two Ferraris already and you buy a third Ferrari, it doesn't change very much except maybe of psychological some kind. But I think it's having a Ferrari is already something which is uh, beyond, the, beyond this psychological thing. So this is the logic about the minimum and maximum, uh, behind the minimum and maximum values. And of course, since the index brings together uh, contextually and substantively different areas, so health in measured in uh, uh, life, uh, life expectancy, uh, so, sorry, uh, uh, literacy in terms of uh, ability to read and write, GDP in dollars. So to bring this into one common uh, uh, value, we need to index them, and that's why it's called index. Uh, 
how it is being constructed. Uh, uh, life expectancy, as I mentioned, is different from average lifespan. And uh, it is the probability value. How many years a person is expected to live from the date of uh, uh, the birth. Or from certain point in life. You have life expectancy remaining, for example, if you are 19, what is your life expectancy under the current conditions? And it reflects the current situation in a certain country or environment in terms of health, in terms of other hazards. And uh, why it is important? Because uh, depending on the current status, for example, of the health sector, uh, we have different uh, levels of mortality. And based on these different levels of mortality, the probability of survival uh, is being calculated based on mortality tables. And uh, this is something which is highly uh, dependent uh, on the quality of population statistics. Basically, uh, all the elements of the Human Development Index are very much dependent on the population This is because at least we have the uh, number of people in the denominator of most of this. But also it, it is very much uh, linked to the different uh, cultural context. For example, unreported deaths or migration is very difficult to capture, and this is something which distorts the picture. The education uh, literacy is uh, based on census or micro census if we have uh, in between and the enrollment rate is uh, uh, calculated. It is the share of uh, children attending school at the respective level out of all those who are supposed to attend. For example, if you have 100 children in the age of uh, primary schooling and out of them just 80 attend and the others just hang around on the streets, we have enrollment rate of 80%. And of course, there is difference between first, second, and third enrollment rates. Third is the highest, higher education, uh, first is uh, um, uh, primary, and second, secondary. Normally, uh, all people should attend the uh, first, uh, most of them the second, but not all of them go to the third level. The difference between net and gross enrollment rates is also sometimes uh, 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 not taken into consideration. For example, some countries use gross, some others net, and uh, we have uh, differences in the rankings and in the comparisons between countries due to that. Net enrollment rate is calculated based on uh, those who are supposed to attend. So uh, if we have these 80 people uh, attending school, if, for example, five of them are repeaters, they didn't uh, uh, go to the next class and uh, they are repeating the class, so they are not supposed to attend the same class, but they are attending, they should not be counted in this 80. The gross just calculates everything, everybody who attends. What is better? Of course, net is better than gross, but it's much more difficult to calculate. Economic component. This is something which is very difficult for various reasons. Uh, first of all, uh, GDP is, in fact, a proxy itself. It's a proxy on the one hand of the economic potential of the country, but from human development perspective, uh, we perceive it as a proxy of uh, the material uh, conditions, opportunities. We assume that the wealth generated in a certain country goes, and this is something which uh, determines uh, the opportunities of people to have their incomes, housing, and so on and so forth. This is one assumption which does not necessarily uh, hold true because uh, it is very much dependent on how uh, you spend your GDP, what is the structure of final consumption. Mikhail mentioned that, for example, GDP can be spent on arms, and uh, then does it have any relations to human development? Of course not. Also, uh, one very fundamental issue which is not reflected is the issue of debt. Debt is reflected uh, in, uh, it can inflate the value of GDP and from human development index calculation perspective, it, is, it, it appears as something uh, which is on the books. But, uh, and, and nominally, nominally it can increase the uh, level of well-being, but it is borrowed nature, so it increases it at the expense of the future generation, it doesn't uh, affect, uh, play it in a sustainable way. Also, the purchase power parity uh, calculations. 
This value is being estimated based on uh, uh, exchange rates uh, calculated uh, in the so-called uh, program of international comparisons, uh, which is done on a periodic basis. And uh, sometimes we have uh, uh, very interesting, uh, curious results. It is done on, uh, I think, roughly once five or seven years. I can't tell you exactly uh, how often. But um, it is also based on samples, comparing price uh, uh, baskets, and uh, it, is, it has many assumptions. The, the equi most recent uh, update was, I think, last year when uh, suddenly, in quotes, uh, the GDP of China turned out to be much lower than we expected, and in the magnitude of this, uh, this difference was, I would uh, say pretty embarrassing for any statistician. So I think it's a good argument when statisticians uh, uh, claim that HDI is not relevant. Well, we can say, and what about your statistics of the GDP? So let me uh, spend a few minutes on the shortcomings. So there are several uh, layers or several groups of shortcomings. The first is related to the indicators themselves. So uh, this slide is structuring uh, uh, into three groups. So first, reliability of the data inputs. Partially I addressed this, but uh, uh, let me repeat. So GDP first fluctuates depending on the PPP estimates. So we have this. By the way, last uh, uh, year human development report have exactly this problem because the report was published two years ago. Last year we had an update and uh, all the indices uh, were recalculated using the new purchase power parity. Uh, estimates and there were huge discrepancies. We need somehow to uh, explain what's going on, why these differences, and uh, not always it was easy to explain that this is just because this or that uh, country estimates were different. And as you understand, it creates often political uh, problems. Somehow explaining the government or presidents why your country suddenly drops nine or ten uh, uh, places in the ranking. Literacy, the problem with the literacy is that it is from census to census, and very uh, rarely mm, uh, countries update in between. So usually you have literacy one uh, every 10 years updated when the census comes. Some countries you don't have even that. And uh, what is even more important, some countries are switching from general literacy to functional literacy, which means not just ability to read and write, but ability to use your knowledge, understand texts, uh, be ab able to fill some basic forms, and so on and so forth. Uh, we had an example, uh, a case, uh, I think, three years ago when a country suddenly switched to uh, uh, functional literacy, uh, and as a result, the uh, value of HDA also dropped dramatically, and. Uh, we have, by the way, representatives of uh, this country here in, in our group. Uh, and enrollment. Enrollment uh, uh, is different for different uh, educational levels, simply because of territorial distribution. Uh, usually, most of the universities are in capitals. So unless you are able to link uh, the enrollment status to the individual and not to the territory, you have hugely uh, biased, uh, biased uh, results uh, in terms of uh, uh, values at subnational level. But also, uh, here we have uh, the issue of international exchange. Many students simply go to study in different countries, increasing other countries' enrollment rates and decreasing uh, their uh, countries of origin enrollment rates. Of course, we have uh, mm, uh, different uh, sources, uh, national and international, and uh, in these uh, estimations, uh, a kind of com compromise between them is being used. I think I don't need to explain why. Sometimes national sources are not quite reliable. But it does not mean automatically that international sources are also uh, reliable, because in most cases they are using the national sources as a basis, so massaging the values somehow that make them more comparable and normative. And, of course, problems with disaggregation is particularly uh, valid when uh, uh, disaggregation of HDI is attempted. Very briefly, some conceptual shortcomings. First, uh, as I mentioned, the incomplete picture, not all areas of human development are reflected. But uh, what is more important, HDI is not suitable for short-term monitoring, as it's sometimes being used. Uh, it is also mm, uh, different uh, in terms of time frame for individual components. When you have HDA from, uh, for example, uh, uh, just improvising 2001 uh, Human Development Report, this is the HDA for 2001. But it is composed of the 
GDP values from three years ago, enrollment values from two years ago, uh, life expectancy usually from two, and enrollment maybe from eight or nine years ago. So these differences, I think, make it a little bit less reliable. Uh, and uh, yes, that's, that's something which I already mentioned. Other uh, areas of shortcomings uh, is the issue of comparability. You can't take uh, a stack of human development reports from 1990 and just do a composite table out of, out of the indexes for the simple reason that the methodology was changing in between. And uh, on the other hand, the values of some of the uh, indicators were changing and updating. This is not something which uh, is related to some direct attempts to uh, falsify statistics. Simply, data uh, comes uh, usually the first round in the kind of uh, more estimated, more rough uh, estimates uh, form. And then next year it is updating for simply procedural reasons, but it is also reflected and uh, decreases somehow the reliability of uh, the values published. And of course, uh, uh, the index is not sensitive to inequalities. Now with this gender development index, it is uh, uh, better, but still there's a lot of uh, uh, things to improve. This slide summarizes the uh, major steps in terms of changes of the formula. One of the reasons why the index today is not the same as index uh, 15 years ago. In 92, uh, um, this longevity dimension was replaced, uh, uh, so, uh, the, the minimum and maximum value from 80 to 85, I think Michael said this. Educational dimension was changed in 94, and instead of uh, average uh, years uh, of schooling, uh, uh, the enrollment rate was introduced. And in 99, the income dimension, this smoothing formula was changed from Atkinson to logarithm so that uh, uh, we, we bring together the huge discrepancies in terms of high GDP value countries and make, make them comparable with low uh, GDP value countries. Very briefly, I will leave this slide to you. Uh, it is summarizing the um, problems we have with data sources because uh, different data sources come from different institutions. Although all of them come from national sources, they're being uh, uh, compiled and uh, uh, put in a comparative form uh, by different institutions, uh, United Nations Population Division, UNESCO, UNICEF, World Bank, and uh, this also contributes to the this unclarity. And this is the reason why if you just take the national uh, values and calculate the index for your country, it usually it will not be the same value as uh, you will find published in the Global Human Development Report because the data is reprocessed a little bit so that it is comparable across countries. Why it is still useful? Because it is very important as policy and advocacy tool. Uh, it is a really powerful message to say, fine, you have huge levels of uh, GDP, but it is uh, much more uh, different uh, if you go into other areas. So, of course, for that purpose, you don't uh, need maybe the index. You can have uh, a nice table of uh, various statistics with hundreds of indicators, but people usually don't uh, uh, feel comfortable with too many figures, with too big tables. So the purpose of this index is to be able to deliver a message in a simple, understandable, and persuasive way. And that's what, what it is uh, doing. Of course, in this case, the index falls somehow victim of its own success. Uh, for example, the first thing that happens when the new report is published, people uh, open the annex, look where country their country is in the ranking, and say, oh, fine, or not. Particularly looking where the country is vis-a-vis -vis the neighbors. This is the always the biggest problem. And this is the question we uh, always every, every two years have, have to answer. Why my country dropped and uh, something like that. The interesting thing is when uh, the country drops in the ranking, but still its value of HDI has increased. And then you have to, under, to explain that, yes, you did uh, quite well. Uh, your value of HDI increased, but your neighbors did better because they increased more and faster than you did. And that's why now they're in the ranking higher than you were. So, Yes, it is simple, apparently, but uh, just come and uh, see how it is to explain to politicians. And uh, uh, here we come with the issue of disaggregation, because, uh, as I mentioned, it is very 
popular and increasingly popular. Why? Because the major value of the national level index is advocacy at international level. You can compare countries and you say this country does better than that country. You can say that uh, to a certain extent uh, we can have uh, prioritization. This country should focus on more on education or that country more, just for example, on uh, economic development. But it is still not sufficient for policy operationalization. So in order to do that, in order to build uh, a system which would be providing you with uh, uh, some clues in terms of your national development priorities, it needs to be disaggregated because differences at sub-national level are huge in every country and this is something which needs to be addressed. And that's why uh, the uh, index, uh, human development index, is also disaggregated at sub-national level. The general caveat, it should be adequate, it should be internationally, com internationally comparable, it should co be consistent with the original concept and uh, uh, should have territorial uh, units of analysis of their optimal size. And unfortunately, I'll tell you right away, this is very difficult to achieve. Adequacy is something which you have a figure, but you need to go to do a reality check. Does your f this figure correspond or somehow contradicts maybe to other findings, to other surveys, to other analysis which you may have? International comparability is the biggest issue. We don't have uh, methodology for disaggregation because of the simple fact that uh, different countries have different uh, layers of government, different uh, uh, models of uh, administrative uh, uh, regulations and so on. And also they have different formats of statistic uh, data collection. Uh, some indicator which appears in uh, international level publications can have different value and different meaning if it is disaggregated. So it is very difficult and I would say very problematic to say that, for example, municipality X in country B have the same uh, living standard or they have the same level of human development as country this or that. It is very often being done, but unfortunately it's just for some flashy uh, news uh, articles, titles on the first page. Don't go beyond that. Consistency with the original concept, it is very important uh, because uh, actually there is a choice. Do we go and implement the methodology of uh, HDI as it is, have GDP, disaggregate GDP and use it for, or we have to do something uh, different? And the answer is no, we have to do something different which does not repeat uh, mechanically the methodology but repeats the philosophy of the concept. Because GDP at sub-national level has totally different meaning from GDP at national level. Even assuming that uh, uh, GDP at national is devoted not to arms but to uh, human development purposes. Why? Why? Why do you think it's different? The state has a very important redistributive role. It has the responsibility to maintain certain uh, comparability in countries' condition. It can't say, well, this region is rich, it has uh, uh, resources and high GDP and we just leave it like that and that region poor just let them die out. This issue of uh, a redistribution, the state collects certain resources in the form of taxes and then redistributes them according to their uh, state's regional development priority is something which makes the regional GDP uh, disaggregated, unuseless uh, for, for uh, HDI. Because some countries have for example, national level industries. If we have a nuclear power station in certain municipality, the municipality will have a huge value of GDP, but it doesn't have anything connected to the quality of life and human development opportunities of the people in this municipality. Life expectancy, uh, we have problems with life expectancy. Very simple, because random cases distort the picture. If, for example, a child dies in an accident in some municipality, this random case of death will distort dramatically the uh, value of life expectancy for years ahead. So something needs to be done about this. Education. Also, some children go to school not in their own municipalities, but to the closest school. If they live in the border and the school is uh, in the neighboring municipalities, you can imagine that the enrollment rates will be different for this. Uh, this is also very much relevant to the third level and even sometimes second uh, uh, level of education. 
children go to different cities, not to their uh, place of birth. An economic component, as I mentioned, I won't go, I don't have time, but we can discuss in addition. It cannot be just taken and uh, disaggregated. At national level, uh, GDP can be assumed as a proxy of disposable income. At sub-national level, we need a different proxy of disposable income. GDP disaggregated can be a basis for this estimation, but cannot be taken as a face value. And unfortunately, very often is taken. This is the last slide. Assuming that we have uh, nice data, nice methodologies, robust, and we have disaggregated HDI, what do we do? So first of all, please avoid national level rankings. The worst thing which we can, which we can have is uh, two mayors knocking on your door and complaining. Why you did this to me? The first will be the mayor of the best municipality appearing and he will say, you just cut off all my subsidies which I used to receive. The second will be the worst which will say, you just shamed me so that I cannot show in, uh, show in, in, in my streets. So. It's very difficult, really, because it's also politically, politically dangerous. I have seen this myself and I had this problem. So the only, the only useful way, of, if you want to have rankings, is to have some kind of district ranking. Within a broader region, municipalities can be ranked, but not nationally. And of course, uh, always be aware of the, of the magnitudes of the errors. Uh, in most cases, the countries uh, maintaining uh, rather uh, equal level of development. There are not such huge levels of disparities that uh, uh, will be very defendable. Uh, be aware, maybe the mm, uh, differences which you will have in the HDI level simply are due to some kind of statistical error and not to the real disparities. And of course, be prepared for heated debate. This is, I think, the positive thing because uh, we witness this very often. Even with less perfect indices, there is very genuine interest in the people. Somehow it provokes. And maybe this is, again, coming back to the advocacy role of uh, Human Development Index. It has also uh, a role in this local level and somehow revealing and uh, uh, unleashing uh, energy in this regard from the people and the communities. Thank you. Thank you.